Hey there guys, how's it going and welcome to my first video in my Hardcore Arc series. In this series, I'm going to take on the challenge of beating the alpha boss while playing solo on the Hardcore difficulty. If you're not sure what Hardcore difficulty means in Arc, that means upon a single death it is a complete reset. So this is going to be a real challenge for me, considering all of the tames I'll need to get, the boss artifacts and the boss tributes without being able to take a single death. Now although it's not a speed run, we are going to be trying to beat the boss as soon as possible, so we're not going to be doing anything that might detract us from beating that alpha boss. So here are the settings that I've set myself for this challenge. We're going to be playing single player settings. We of course have to be the alpha level boss while playing solo on hardcore mode. All rates are going to be 10 times. There's going to be a stack mod as well as auto engram unlock. And if anything untoward happens with Ark being a very glitchy game at times, especially in single player, like the game crashes, I get a blue screen, something's meshed or something dies to mesh, I will be using admin commands in those circumstances. To decide which map I was going to play for this playthrough, I put a poll up on my community tab on my YouTube channel. You guys overwhelmingly voted for the center and I was really pleased about that. I think it's a really underappreciated map and it's been a long time since I spent a decent amount of time on there. Also it's a boss fight that is doable solo but will be challenging, especially in terms of gathering all those artifacts and tributes. One of the other settings that I set myself in this challenge is to not use any engrams or dinos from any of the other maps. So to put into perspective the scale of the challenge ahead of me, let me list off all of the tributes that I need to get to trigger the alpha boss fight. I need to get 25 of each of the following. Argentavis Talon, Bacillo Blubber, Megalania Toxin, Megalodon Teeth, Sauropod Vertebrae, Sarco Skins, Spino Cells, Thylo Claws, Titan Boa Venom, and Tuso Tentacles. Now there's quite a few in there that stand out as being quite difficult and a bit of a grind to collect 25 of them, especially the Tuso Tentacles, meaning we're going to need to get ourselves a good deep sea dino to go and collect those. Also, the artifacts we're going to need are Artifact of the Clever, Hunter, Massive, Pack, Devour and Brute. Some of these can be very challenging to collect, so I'm going to have to prepare well and make sure I've got everything I need to go and collect all of these. Before we get stuck into the gameplay highlights, it's worth mentioning that I live streamed all of this gameplay here on my YouTube channel. It was really, really fun to do and it's also a really good way to make sure that I'm keeping everything completely honest because if I took a death or anything like that, you would actually see it. So if you're not subscribed to this channel, make sure that you subscribe now and turn on notifications, especially as you wanna make sure you're here for the live streams. They're way more fun if you can actually watch them live. Now, if you did miss out on them, you'd like to watch them back, there will be a playlist in the description to all of the gameplay completely unedited if you want to sit back and watch the whole thing but there are going to be more challenges coming in the next few weeks so look out for those live streams as well so now i've introduced the series and the challenge set ahead of me in this episode let's get stuck into the gameplay and go through my thought process of how i went about taking on this challenge so to start off my challenge i decided to spawn at tropical island north I thought this would be an ideal spot with all the basics. Tropical Island South might have been a little bit risky as Therizinos and Alpha Dinos tend to spawn on there, but Trop North doesn't have those problems and it has all of the early game resources we're going to need. As I started putting points into my stats, I quickly realised that I'm probably going to want quite a lot of health here. Normally when you're playing regular official, you don't go too crazy on the health and rely on having good Dura armour to keep you alive. But knowing in this playthrough I was very unlikely to find good durability armour, I would need to have quite a lot of health. This might also save me in certain circumstances, especially if it gets really cold or hot quickly, and also if I fall off of a flyer or fall from a ledge and forget to deploy my parachute. I also put a point into Fortitude just to stop myself getting knocked out by Trudons, however as you're going to see a little bit later in the playthrough, I wish I'd put a few more points into this stat. Now putting this many points into health meant I was sacrificing a little bit of weight and movement speed. I wanted to be at least 140 movement speed which would allow me to get away from most of the creatures that are going to be chasing me. And having high weight was always going to be beneficial especially when playing solo. For the first few minutes I wasn't sure whether I was going to tame a Pteranodon to get to where I wanted to base up or make a raft and use that instead. I was actually considering using a raft to live on but knowing how many leads are on the centre map I thought better of that idea. So I tamed myself a decent level trade on and headed off to where we were going to base up. What are we talking about? Oh, one, four, five. <laughs> oh, you got to love the center, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Oh, that stamina is weak, source. 
Right, so I might actually use this to look for other ones. That sounds like a decent idea, doesn't it, guys? So once my Pteranodon was tamed, I went and looked for a second Pteranodon to potentially mate them. I wouldn't need too many Pteranodons, hopefully, in this playthrough. However, if I bred them, I might get some slightly better stats. So I looked for an opposite gender Pteranodon, got both of those, and then headed over to where I was going to base up. Now, basing up in the right place is going to make a huge difference in this playthrough and really help us with our challenge. My thought process was number one, I didn't want to live anywhere that was too hot or too cold where I was going to have to worry about the weather constantly draining my health. I also didn't want to base up anywhere where too many dangerous dinos spawn, so that ruled off the lava, the snow areas and the redwood. I also didn't want to base up anywhere up high just to make it easier to get up and down and lower the risk of me actually dying from fall damage. And finally I wanted it to be quite a central location. Having a location in the middle of the map is going to make it a lot easier to get to all the different resources in the different areas of the map. With all of this in mind, I headed over to an island that was actually in the northwest section of the North Jungle. It was just big enough to base up on and also there wasn't too many aggro dinos. This would be absolutely ideal to base from. Now I didn't want to waste any time making a huge base, it purely just needed to be practical. So I settled on making a 5x5 with two high stone walls. Maybe I could have made some ceilings, but not only would have that have taken a little bit longer, but also it would have meant it was a little bit more difficult to get any farming that I'd done in and out of the base. Having built the basics of my base and then put down a smithy and a forge to start smelting metal to start making some good tools and flak, my next thoughts turned to cryopods. I planned on taming quite a lot of creatures in this playthrough to allow me to get all of these artifacts and defeat the boss, so I was going to need an easy way to store the creatures, get them back to base after I obtain them, and a way for them to gain XP without me actually having to go out and gain XP manually. Right, let's just do a quick couple of metal runs so this will just set us up nicely. Once we've got cryopods, we can go taming. Go tame some freaking... Don't forget, I'm gonna to have to tame all different kinds of dinos just to allow me to go and collect the artifacts. So knowing that the cryopods were going to be essential, I started to turn my thoughts to what resources I'm gonna to need to craft them. One of the resources needed for cryopods is organic polymer. Luckily, this wasn't a huge problem. There was a huge amount of Hesperonis based right next to where I was, and killing just a few of those gave me plenty of polymer for now. I also had the stack mod on, and I'll be honest, this did make it a little bit easier with the organic polymer, as it stacked up nice and high so it wouldn't spoil. All right, this will give me an all right amount of polymer, right? Oh, 76 per one? Yikes. I went to collect some cementing paste from the nearby rivers. However, being single player, the beaver dams hadn't spawned in yet. So this was gonna make it slightly annoying to get early game paste. So I had to just do it the old fashioned way by grinding up some chitin and stone. The final resource I needed that was gonna be slightly annoying to get was oil. So just because of memory, I remembered there was some oil nodes on the top of the North Snow Mountain. So I grabbed my Pteranodon and headed on up there. This is the first time where we had a close call with death. I had hugely underestimated just how cold it was up there and how little the fortitude I'd put on would have an effect. Okay, let's go to the snow. Um, I want my cooked meat because it's going to be a little bit cold over there. Um, I should be okay in hide, to be honest. I'm not going to be there long. What time of day is it? It is turning night time, but we, we won't be there long. I headed up to the top of the mountain, grabbed my oil, and as soon as I collected it, I started noticing my health drastically dropping. Things got really close here. You'll be able to see on screen just how low my health gets. Oh, my health, what is my health, hello? Oh my God, I need to get out of here. I didn't think it'd go down that quick. Oh guys, this could be the end of the run. Look at my health. And not only that, I needed to land for stamina, and land for stamina in an area that is full of wolves, Euteranus, Carnos, and dangerous dinos. Whew. I'm going to be careful next time. I managed to stop in a spot that was just clear enough for me to regain my stamina and head back to base. However, this was an early warning signal. Not only would I need some better gear if I'm going to be going to the cold biomes, like some good fur... But also, I'm going to need to craft myself some med brews. Even if it means making them in cooking pots, it could absolutely save my life, which is of course essential in a hardcore playthrough. So after that close encounter with death, I made some cooking pots. You can of course make med brews in cooking pots using narcotic, tinto berries, and a water source like water skins or canteens. 
It's a little bit slow and annoying, however, I felt it absolutely essential at this point to do this, bearing in mind how close to death I just came. I also found it a little bit annoying having to go to the water's edge constantly to drink or to fill up my water skins, so I made an irrigation system to bring water to the base. I also had enough metal at this point to upgrade my armor from hide to flak, which is a big game changer, gives you a lot more durability on your armor and armor protection, which should help me survive in some of these dodgy situations. What? All right, flak, flak, flak. Get the flak on. Oh yeah, full flak, baby. Now, knowing I was going to need a lot of narcotic, not only to tame dinos, but to use for my med brews, I decided to tame myself a berry gatherer. And luckily, there was a good level trike just outside the base. By the time I'd done this, I also now had everything that I needed to craft my cryopods. I waited for a drop to drop by it right next to my base, just to lower the risk of me dying while going out to try and find a drop to make these cryopods in. And once I'd done that, I made as many as I could. Now while looking for cementing paste just a little bit before, I had noticed a high level RG over by one of the nearby lakes in the north jungle. A high level RG was going to make farming much much easier and I hopefully wasn't going to need to do a huge amount of farming this playthrough but I would definitely need to do a few metal stone and flint runs to get myself on track. Alright beautiful, I think this is a good spot as any. That looks good. All right, it's coming down to land. That's all good. Let it just aggro on me. And there we go. Then we do this. Then we do this. And then we get out of here. All right. This is it, right? 135. Beautiful. That'll be more than enough. I knocked out the Argent no problem using a good old-fashioned traditional dino gate trap and headed back to base. Now I had a good amount of narcotic in the base. I wanted to tame myself an early game Rex. This is scary first time going to Lava Island on hardcore arc. If we die, we lose everything. My general plan to take on the boss fire was to use Rexes. They're very easy to tame, they're very reliable to use, and they're always effective against any boss that stays on the ground. I knew I'd need a breeding pair as this was probably going to be more effective than taming all of the Rexes that I needed, however I just wanted to get the first one tamed as soon as possible. Luckily when I headed over to the lava island we found a level 140 male Rex. This is absolutely ideal and I took no risks while taming this. Normally if I was playing I'd probably run around on lava island while knocking it out, but I decided to make a dino gate trap and use a large bear trap to trap it inside the trap just to make sure it would be completely trapped within there and I'd have no troubles knocking it out. I had to keep an extra close eye out while knocking this out. On this lava island, scorpions, raptors, saber tooths and even rexes can sneak up on you at any time. Am I worried about raptors? Absolutely. It's quite a nice one, like an albino rex. I don't even know if this is enough arrows. I haven't even really thought about it. Should be plenty. Now while our Rex was taming, I decided to go to the big lava entrance cave just to see if I could fly in there, maybe pick up an artifact. Now I had honestly thought that I turned on allow flying in caves on the settings and this mistake nearly led to my first death. Right, I've got, I've got cave flyers on. I can't remember if you can fly through here normally. I can get kicked off here. Right, hold on guys, actually. We need to pay a bit of attention because I could die here. And this... Oh! 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 Okay, okay, okay. Okay, that's not good. Okay, so I can't do this. Now this is where being prepared really came in clutch. I had grapples on me and absolutely essential in this game and I made them as soon as I could. Using parachutes and grapples, I managed to grapple back to a safe part of the cave, managed to fly on out of there, but I'd learned my lesson. I definitely didn't have cave flying on and I'm glad I didn't. It did make it a little bit more challenging and a little bit more fun. Now I didn't actually look at the stats of my Rex. I knew it would be good enough for what I needed, so I just cryoed it up and headed back to base. We're actually running low on metal, so we do need that RG pretty bad. 
By the time we got back to base, my Argent had also finished taming. So the first thing I did with that was just go and grab a good lot of metal just so I could get that smelting while I get on with other things. Next up, I crafted my Fabricator, which did mean returning to North Snow. However, I was prepared this time and didn't lose too much health. I would need this Fabricator for many things, but essentially at this point, I was thinking about Scuba, as we are going to have to go into the Deep Sea to get ourselves those two so tentacles. Next up, I crafted a whole bunch of refining forges. The quicker I could get the metal smelted, the easier it would make doing everything that I wanted to do, like craft chainsaws, extra flak, metal for wreck saddles, all that kind of thing. I then crafted a chainsaw and used the chainsaw and the argent to go get myself a good amount of wood. I wanted to actually get a lot of wood smelting because I needed the charcoal that the wood would produce to make gunpowder and I wanted to go into this boss fight with plenty of ammo should things go a bit wrong. And charcoal of course can take a long time to smelt so the earlier I got this going the better it would be. After crafting some more narcotic to tame more dinos, I decided to tame myself a Procoptodon. This was going to be a way more effective way of me quickly getting berries, and also I could take this into the boss fight. If you don't know, in the alpha boss fight on the center, there is a ledge that you can get to with a Procoptodon where you'll be out of harm's way and the boss won't be able to get to you. If for some reason things go wrong with the Rexes, this Procoptodon could be a last minute thing that I could get on, and it might save me and help me beat the boss. Right, let's. There's always Ankies around here. If I could get one that was like right here, that would be absolutely ideal. And there's one. It's got to be level 100 though, even though it doesn't really matter. Please. Oh, you absolute beauty. While taming the Procoptodon, I also knocked myself out an Ankylo. This was going to make farming more efficient as they have a weight reduction when it comes to metal. Now taming all these farming dinos is all well and good, but I was already starting to think about what dinos I would need to go and get all of these artifacts and tributes. Although I've done the alpha boss fight on the center many times with a tribe and on official, I haven't actually gone and collected every single artifact and tribute myself, so I wasn't sure exactly how dangerous some of these caves were going to be. My thoughts were I'd either maybe need a Thylaco or a Dire Bear to get into the cave. A Thylaco would be a more ideal choice, however at this point I didn't want to have to go to the Redwoods if I didn't have to. Redwoods can be extremely dangerous, especially at night with Trudons everywhere, just a couple of hits and that could be the end of my run. Thylacos can knock you off, Microraptors can knock you off your tames, and before you know it, you're dead and you don't even know what happened. So I wanted to avoid that at this early stage and went and got myself a Dire Bear. Dire bears are pretty good, they can fit through most of small caves, they're pretty tanky, they've got decent melee, and it's pretty easy to tame as well. Freaking Hesperonis. I didn't realize these things actually attacked ya. Freaking cheeky little guy. Look at ya. Give me Technic. Right, we're finally prepped, and I've got some levels. Level 105, baby! Right, a 140. This is probably going to be as good as any. Unfortunately, two bears fell into my trap, and this was a little bit of an issue because I'd only bought just about the right amount of Trank Darts, and the fact that they were two opposite gender bears meant that they had the boost in terms of the mate boost, meaning it would take a few more darts to knock out. Luckily, I ended up knocking it out no problem, and I took it back to base to get it leveled. How are we looking, big man? 3k health. That doesn't seem like a lot. Loads of weight, which is always nice. All right, let's take you back to base. At this point, we were about five hours into the playthrough and I was five hours into my stream. We'd done well. I didn't know exactly what I was going to need going forward, but I knew that we'd made some decent progress. So I decided to log off for the day and resume on day two, where we would start getting our artifacts and tributes for the boss fight. So that is going to wrap it up for part one of this solo alpha boss challenge on the center. There will be a new episode next week. However, if you cannot wait and want to see how this whole challenge played out, there is a members only playlist in the description below with every single second of this challenge. So that's over 24 hours of live stream footage for you to enjoy. To become a member, simply look for the join button linked underneath the video and it will also be linked in the video's description. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you haven't 
noticed I'm actually live streaming these challenges on this channel. So make sure you subscribe with notifications on so that you can catch some of the live streams. We have a load of fun in there and it's really cool to interact with you guys live. Also as a bonus, if you do become a member during those live streams, you'll get an exclusive chat badge and access to exclusive emotes to use during the stream. Other than that, I'm just going to say thanks for watching guys. Be sure to leave a like on the video before you leave if you haven't done so already and I'll see you in the next one.